Thanks, Tom. All right. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for coming. Uh, exciting times. You know, college football kicked off over the weekend, and and we've had to wait a few days, but we're excited about getting started. We've there obviously been through uh, um, a lot with the team since we we started uh, with with this team really in January, and and uh, headed into now game week. You know, Monday before the first game, uh, we're We've got a, a great opponent coming in. We got a lot of respect for Arkansas State. Me personally, for the history of the program there and the, the work that Blake Anderson has done since he's been there. Uh, they've got some returning players that uh, I'm sure you all know about. The quarterback came in and had a a, a nice run with an eight and two record while he quarterbacked. They won another conference championship and. Uh, then they've got, uh, you know, assorted other good players that go with him. Uh, I think their receiving core is going to be big. Uh, always trying to create those physical mismatch problems with you. And they'll throw the ball down the field. And then defensively, they've got a, a good defense. And they're anchored by a guy that's had a ton of sacks in his career. Uh, and we, don't, we want to do everything we can not to add to that total. But that's a, that's a big chore when you have a pass rusher like that. So we've got to do a great job there. Uh, we've gotten to the point now, of course, with our personnel that we are, we're pretty well set going into the, uh, into the week. Uh, we've been through a lot there. There, there are still some guys, some young guys in particular that are, that you know we anticipate playing. Tyjon Lindsey will play. Jalen Bradley will play. Uh, Avery Roberts will play. DeAndre Thomas will play, and then guys like uh, Damian Daniels. Uh, Brendan Hymas, Guy Thomas, we're, we're, we're going to have them being ready for action, uh, whether or not they play. Uh, Tristan Jebbia will be like that, uh, like we did last year with Patrick O'Brien. Tristan will be our number three. Our, I, I suppose our goal would be that he redshirts, uh, but he will be active in in getting game ready and practice, um, travel, all that part of it with us. So that's what that looks like with the young guys. Um, besides the ones you already know about, we're in pretty good shape physically uh, going into this week. We got to keep it that way throughout the week. Um, we have named our captains, which you are all aware of. Uh, we will announce our black shirts within the next few hours um, and then uh, then we're off to what would be a fairly routine week of practice and I, what I mean by that is we'll, we'll get into a rhythm of what we do obviously starting on, on Mondays with our team in practice which is what we're going to do this year uh, this will be a little different Monday because we just didn't have a game Saturday, so we'll approach it slightly different with a little more interaction between our ones uh, during the day. But as far as the game prep part of it, it will start to become uh, a routine countdown of day five right into game day. And this would be normally our day five, but it'll be more like a day four practice physically for our team today. Um, we had our mock game on Saturday night. Uh, that game really was uh, very non-physical, uh, mostly mental, a lot of substitutions, uh, a lot of situations, a lot of situation substitutions, some time clock stuff, uh, end of the half, end of the game, uh, two minute Onside, team, onside kick team, hands team to recover an onside kick. All the situations, we did it a lot. I thought our team was great. It was nice to be in the stadium, had a nice atmosphere with the students. The band was there. It felt good. It felt good. It was a nice uh, Nebraska night for all that. So, you know, all, all, the, all the different parts uh, we, we basically headed, headed into from the start of our camp. Uh, on July 29th when we reported to today has has uh, mostly been non-dramatic um, really low maintenance group I appreciate that and I think this is uh, 
time to get ready, you know, on the on the final days here, countdown for a, a, a great weekend of uh, opening day football in Memorial Stadium. Questions? Nine and four a year ago, what's success for Nebraska football this year? Well, you know, we we don't put any ceiling on the success, nor do we announce anything that, that's going to happen. We have to go prove it. We're excited about the opportunity with this team, and, and uh, we expect continual growth. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's an old-fashioned statement of one game at a time. That's the only way to do it. This team, there's been a lot of changes with this team. So, every, like everybody, we are all excited about getting it underway. And, um, you know, we'll have a, um, we have a, a whole new defense, a lot of new defensive staff members. Uh, and, you know, of course, we're, we're, it's the big change over at the quarterback position. Uh, so, you know, there's a, there's a lot of new things on the horizon. Um, we are excited and optimistic and feel good about all the preparation. And uh, now we've got to go out and prove it. Week by week. Mike Boston. Tanner was voted uh, captain on the team. What does that say about what the teammates feel about him and his leadership going into the season? I think in general this group uh, it was not surprising to me that got selected captain. It was not surprising to me that Tanner Lee got selected a captain because of his entry a year ago. I think I've said this before. He came in as a guy, um, as one of the guys, uh, well liked by everybody. And soon when they learned about him, he was well respected by everybody. He was elected a captain of one of our off-season teams by the team. So him being selected as a captain for this season did not surprise me. He's uh, He's, he's been there. Uh, uh, he's got a very confident way, uh, but relatively uh, humble way of, of being and uh, just does his, does his business. Uh, I think the players look up to him. Hey, Mike, uh, you know, with, with Tanner Lee, uh, a lot of hype surrounding him. Uh, well, you know, given his, his past at Tulane, his, his numbers, I guess, on paper weren't all that distinguishing. What, what makes you think he can have a lot of success in the Big Ten? Well, we, you know, we, we have always liked uh, Tanner and in, in who he is personality-wise as a, as a way he has kind of entered the team, learned, uh, and how he commands a presence out there with our team. Uh, calling plays in the huddle, running the show, so to speak. We've liked that. We've always liked his ability. Um, you know, like every quarterback that's played, we're always looking, whatever it was then, uh, how's it going to be growth-wise in the future? So wh wherever he was, we, you know, we, we've coached him, prepared him. Uh, he, he has been really coachable. Uh, and so we feel good about his grasp of what we're doing. We feel great about his ability, you know, and then it's just like the rest of our team. Like I just mentioned, now we just got to go out and, and play and prove it as a team. You know, this, this, uh, uh, is a big story about the quarterback, why he came here. Uh, I think, uh, you know, People ask me about that all the time. You know, you know, how's he going to handle all the attention? All, you know, and I think that's why he came. I mean, I, not necessarily for the attention, but this arena, uh, this kind of place. Uh, he he wanted to put himself in it, and I appreciated that about him. And then the other thing is, is that uh, through his preparation, which has been extensive, and the and the work he's done with our team, I think the confidence built in that with with our team, not only about how he's played, but the fact that they thought enough of him to elect him as a captain in a, in a large majority of votes. Uh, uh, that's all a good sign. All those things are a good sign. So, again, it's all going to be the proof in the pudding, how, how we play. And, and I don't want to be that guy that just says, give the ball to the quarterback and go win the game for us. I mean, it's going to take our team. Our line's got to do a great job. Our running game's got to be good. Receivers have to make plays. I mean, it's no different. Uh, so, you know, the, all the parts have to work together for the quarterback to be good. So this isn't just going to be about – how he plays. It's going to be how all those parts around him play. Mike, you list three running backs, co-number one. How do you go about that this game, 
week one? I mean, are you, are you hoping that one can emerge as the hot hand, or do you have a plan where they're going to rotate equally uh, here on Saturday? We certainly have a plan, and uh, and I don't know that it'll be equal in all terms, but but there there are some strengths there that situationally they'll be, you know, they'll be moved in and out of the game. Um, we're not ready to say who's even going to take the first snap. I, I know who is, but but until we get further along in the week, we'll we'll talk about that. But you know, in doing what we did, we feel good about those players, and uh, you know, they have uh, they have all at times in the, in their past done good things, and so we looked for that consistent growth within that group, within that group individually, and we, we feel good about all those guys. So, uh, you know, I, I won't guarantee it. My guess is they will all play, and, and some of them will be s specific situation guys. You have three freshmen listed as kick return and start with Spielman. At the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just about that spot, are you, how excited are you about their potential there and kind of what went into that decision that you put back on? Well, we certainly feel good about uh, the abilities of those guys. Spillman uh, and Lindsey and Bradley all have ability. I mean, ability to run, run in, run in space, uh, and I think create something special. They they all have that, you know, and and uh, and so, I, and I think uh, you know. JD hasn't played yet, um, and there, there's a guy that you know is going to start at slot back for us, and we feel we're, we're all very excited about that, and and we're excited about his ability as a kick returner, um, and so he, he's that that guy that also has to go out there and then do it in the ball game. But we're excited about it. I don't think Tyjon Lindsay will blink at all, you know, when put in the game and. And we've been really impressed with the ability that Jalen Bradley has shown as a runner, as a receiver, playing on special teams. He's playing on other teams besides the return teams, too. So, you know, we're excited about him as a football player. Um, so we feel good about putting them in. You know, that's, those are the kinds of spots where, in my history, guys have moved in and played, you know, way back to... James Rogers and Sammy Strader and Marcus Wheaton and Brandon Cooks, they all played as true freshmen. They, they showed what their ability was. Uh, they showed what their knowledge was. Uh, and they built confidence uh, within, this, within our coaching staff of being able to play. Uh, so they played. And that's where these guys are. If one of those captains is Kalu. What, I mean, what's he mean not just to that back end, but the defense as a whole? And also, he's, I guess he's from the Houston area, is, is everything okay on that front? Yeah, I, th I think so. You know, uh, I think that Josh Kalu is, is a well-respected guy within this team. Uh, you know, I think that players, uh, as they elect captains, they certainly reflect on, on who those guys are as players many, many times. That's that's evident, uh, but uh, Josh has, has, especially through I think the summer, through the fall camp in August, uh, through his position change and his engagement with that, uh, and and, and I, th I think through the, the plays that he has made, he's gained a lot of respect from this group in general. So uh, I think he's a good reflection of that of that defensive side of the ball. Kind of piggybacking off of the, the talent situation, you've got a lot of young guys on the depth chart. Um, in terms of talent evaluation, when you were going out, how do you guys feel about having so many young guys on this depth chart? Did you feel that having guys uh, that you'd have a number of young guys to come in and have a number of guys contribute right away? Was, it, was that surprising? Did you feel the talent, the talent evaluation kind of went above and beyond? You know, I think that uh, part part of part of it is well, certainly the young guys that I've mentioned that are going to play in the games. Uh, you know, we 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 certainly appreciated their talent uh, to recruit them, and the, and the other part was is that you know they, they had to show during the fall camp that they could fit and play, 
uh, that that uh, they would be comfortable with, you know, what they had to do and how they did it. You know, so technically they could make plays. Uh, so we felt good about the talent. We felt good about where they are. It's a process of discovering that through that time. The other thing is some of them took advantage of opportunities where we weren't real deep. And so they forged their way in, proved that they could be that guy, and then were able to earn that spot on the depth chart where they would play. DeAndre Thomas is a good example of that. I mean, he, wor he worked his way into a position where he looked like he could make a difference for us playing in the games. Damian Daniels is like that, too, at that same spot. So, you know, we, we're, we're – Damian is ready to play. DeAndre will play and alternate in, and that position should be strong. Your 3-4 defense, here we are in late August. Are you ahead of schedule? I mean, we haven't played a game yet, obviously. Is it ahead of schedule, right on schedule, or behind schedule right now for you? It certainly feels good. You know, I think the uh, the, the team, uh, the, the defensive players in learning it, have been very enthusiastic in their learning. Uh, I think it's a carryover uh, kind of both from the excitement of something new and the enthusiasm and energy that the staff has brought to their teaching. Uh, I think that uh, that is a, has been for me watching that an exciting process. Uh, the teaching that's going on, the work on the field. Uh, uh, I think the very specific placement of players, of where they belong in this new scheme, and then teaching them how to play. It's, it's been impressive. Now, as you said, we got to go play a game and see how it all looks, but the process has been exciting to watch. You, you, you're a big believer in teaching and development. What has impressed you, and maybe even surprised you, about Bob Diaco's teaching ability um, in the short time that he's been here? Well, I think that, uh, first of all, what Bob did is studied the players on the team as best he could physically, gathered as much information as he, he could, and did a very thoughtful job of the placement of players. There's a profile in the 3-4 defense, as there is in every defense, but he has a very specific idea of what the profile of a guy looks like at each position. So, you know, for certain players, to, to be looked at and placed and then s kind of selected for that position, I think is, is uh, motivating to those people. You know, I think that, for instance, Luke Gifford, who really hasn't played that much, all of a sudden found in this 3-4 defense a spot and grew because of kind of the confidence put in him to place him. This is, this is you as that outside linebacker to the field. This is why you fit in. He, he grabbed onto it. He was taught well. He's now, in, in, the, in the time we've had in practice, to me, playing the best football I've ever seen him play. Now let's go play in the game. So it's been really, I think, energizing for individuals. Chris Weber, the same way. The latching onto that inside linebacker, a leadership role in there. Through that leadership role of playing, calling the defenses, the team recognized that, elected him a captain, found a whole new life like that, I think, uh, playing in it. Uh, you know, I think a guy like, like Alex Davis, new position, had his hand down for all that time before, playing out there, fits the profile, you know, the, so grabbing onto something that is his, has, he has some ownership to, and then he's taught real well. It's, it's been, that's what's been exciting to me. I think that Bob does a great job of painting a picture for a player. And there's a ton of emphasis placed on how to play. You know, the, this is your position. This is what you have to do. The repetition in practice is over and over and over again. But done in a way that is, uh, I think, always keeps the player on the edge of learning, which is all good. Do you have any coach that you've worked with or admired or appreciated over the years? Well, I think I go way back to my first job. Ad Rutschman was a consummate teacher of how to play football, you know, my, my first boss. Um, and... You know, and I've always admired that in people that really um, kind of gravitate toward 
the part of, you know, everybody can have a scheme, but it really is what goes on on the inside of it that helps players play better. And Ad was adamant that everybody did that on our staff, that you had to teach guys how to play, very specific technically how to play. Uh, and I love that part of it. That appears to me of what has taken place with our team. Each guy, the repetition of what they do, how they have to play, it's it's been a fun process to watch. What's it been like from your standpoint taking that all that learning and then watching them put together a specific game plan? So it's well, that's you know that that's kind of the beauty of getting into a game week. You know, sometimes the overall inventory of what people have to learn spring practice, fall camp, is vast, and it is vast for a reason. You're trying to to do a lot of different things, you know, that apply to a season not necessarily to a game. So getting into the last few days of last week and all of this week, that inventory will shrink to this for this game. So it's the goal is there for the players now to have this knowledge and then be able to specifically apply it to who they're playing in a smaller smaller inventory of game plan. Um, and, and that, I think can build confidence through the week. That's what will happen now every week, you know, is that parts that have been practiced in fall camp, spring practice, and what the players worked on in the summertime, they're all pieces of that are put into the game plan. You know, the, the, the parts that have to continue to be rehearsed that you never lose track of are, <clears throat> are the individual techniques that go into it. That's still why we'll maintain an individual period in practice to continue that growth of doing the technical parts at a high level. Uh, but schematically, it will be brought down to a game plan level rather than a whole fall camp inventory of everything that you might want to do through the season. And then the other thing that you, you practice that have to be a part of every game week are those situations that are specific to the, the clock in the game, the score in the game, situationally in the game, third down situations, red zone situations, uh, two minute drills, uh, four minute offense, um, and all those things. Having the ball in the minus one, punting out of your own end, all those parts, are, they're, they're practiced throughout fall camp, brought out from time to time during the season, try to be game ready for each week. That's uh, the other part of what you have to do. And we've hit all those situations in a good way, I think. Um, and at the same time, just had a base set of uh, kind of a broad inventory of what we've done over fall camp. Michael, how did you uh, feel about how would you characterize Tanner Lee's camp? Uh, just in a big picture sense, where, what did you like and what, what would you say he still needs to work on? Well, I think that uh, if, if I look big, big picture with Tanner, the first word I would use from day one to right now today, Steve, is consistency. You know, I think that, uh, you know, he is not... You know, I've used the word dramatic quite a bit describing this team or non-dramatic. Uh, and that's basically in just being able to handle our day-to-day -day business. But Tanner is kind of the same every day, coming to work, you know, going to his meetings, studying, uh, getting ready to go, always kind of out there doing his thing when he's supposed to. Uh, I think really embracing the football end of it, that was always, uh, I think, a, he, I think he loves it, you know, so, so being ready at the meeting, being ready at practice, that was always consistent. Now, the, the, the thing that, uh, that you hope continues to grow that is, I don't think, ever a finished product is, is taking his knowledge of what we are doing and do it, doing it more efficiently and quicker all the time. Um, I, I think the, the, the more I watch and learn and over the years uh, kind of appreciated quarterbacking, one of the attributes I love the most is a guy that can hit his back foot, make a decision, and get the ball out of his hands. A lot of problems disappear when you do that. You know, sometimes they might even have a free, clear rusher. 
and the ball's gone. And so that attribute is one that n you never stop growing in. And that's why I think that you see in pro football guys whose skills may be diminishing, their quarterbacking hasn't. They're still quarterbacking at a high level because all that stuff goes faster and they, they, they get rid of the ball quicker or, or they know more about getting out of something into something else. Uh, and, and so I think that that's where Tanner will continue to grow. He's got a great release, throws a great ball, can throw all the balls arm strength wise that we, that we would want to throw. That part of it will never end. Uh, you know, and, and even our young guy the other day in our two-minute drill, Tristan Jebbia had, I think, in a, in a two-minute drill that our offense ended up scoring, he might have had six throws in it, five complete. The five that he completed, he hit his back foot, took a quick hit or not at all, and threw the ball and moved the team. And they blitzed on the last play from the 20-yard line. He hit a back quick before anybody could get there and scored a touchdown. It was really, it was fun for me to see a freshman quarterback do that in a two-minute drill. Uh, very, that, that's a picture of where quarterbacks, they make you feel good. You know, when I'm watching a game and we call a play and I can see a coverage out there, I know what the coverage is, I know what the pattern is that we've called, and I know then where the ball should go. And if it's not going there, then we got a problem. Um, and so I feel good about Tanner's ability to know what to do with the football. And he, that will all, always continue to grow with continued study and play. Mike, Mike you've got several walk-ons that are starting on Saturday, including Cole Conrad. What impressed you about him that he's the starting Well, Cole has been a very, very steady person and player since we arrived. You know, I mean, his growth has been fun to watch. He has worked hard and, and basically a year ago worked himself into a deal to play because he was so knowledgeable about the big picture. You, you know, when, when he now plays at center, you know, he will have played all the positions on the offensive line. So his intelligence, his savvy for the game, you know, we give him a big responsibility at center because we need the football cleanly for the quarterback, and then we need him to do a job. He's a reliable, hardworking, conscientious, great teammate. Uh, he's got all those attributes that make a good football player. I have one more question. Uh, you brave about the yeah. How do I think that that carries over? Uh, you know, for, I, I think that, uh, you know, when, when you get a camp or, or you get, you have a quality in a team that appears to be uh, that this group is really consistent. You know, we had virtually nobody showing up late for meetings, everybody participating in, in the stuff that is kind of out of maybe our eyesight, but part of their day, whether it's the ice tubs or the rehab or the conditioning that's taking place while we're watching film, you know, I, that, there, there, was, there was no drama in that area. When you get all that, you, what you're really getting underneath it all is you're getting an engagement that, that, that shows they want to do what's right for the big group. And what I think that does for you is that when it is hard and when they have invested a lot, they won't quit. They've invested in doing this the right way. Uh, they've invested. I asked them for 20 days, you know, that was just going to be football. We weren't in school. We, weren't, we, we wanted 20 really good days. And it would take a sacrifice on their part to make sure that there was no distraction. And the distraction is being late, not showing up, not wearing the uniform the way you're supposed to when you go on the practice field. Just stuff that we don't want to deal with. Let's do this right so we don't have any drama. Let's get ready to practice football. And this team did a great job of that. You know, we have to prove what all that means again on the field. But as far as the message is, this team wants to do the right thing. Does that translate, do you think, to singer football? Some people do their practice and their behaving that way? I certainly think it should. Yes. I think that every part of that, that you know, the, uh, the, the, the cleaner football to me, Sam, would be 
If, we, if, we, if the punt team's on the field, then we got 11 guys that are engaged and they're ready to go. Now, God forbid that we have 10 on the first punt, you know, but, but th this team has not shown any of that. This has been good. Uh, Scott Booker has been fun to work with. His energy in coaching the special teams is contagious. His meetings are contagious, energetic. Uh, all, that, all the parts leading up to the season that way, the coaching, the enthusiasm for the work, uh, the engagement of the team, that's been at a high level. Now we've got to go play and win games. What's your overall feelings on the Big Ten West? You know, I think that the whole Big Ten is rising, you know, that the competition everywhere uh, will be harder and harder as it goes. There will be some newness in the Big Ten West, you know, with, with a couple of new coaches for sure. So, you know, we, we expect in that way uh, probably an enthusiastic growth of those programs and teams. So I think it, it's, you know, it's going to be – Tough. It's going to be competitive. Every game, every game in college football is like the Super Bowl. Every game's a playoff game, uh, so you've got to be ready each week. There's no excuses for not being ready each week. Uh, we only get one game a week. That's what I tell them. It's not baseball. It's not a three-game series. We got to go play our best every every weekend, and uh, that's that's what it'll be like. All right, we got some players here waiting.